Ladies and gents, welcome back to the channel. Tom here, and today I am excited to talk about some meaningful MLB games that were played. Opening day was the 23rd, and we've had games throughout this whole weekend, so I can't wait to highlight some of the notable games for you guys. And also, I'll be talking about the new expanded playoff format as well. Since this is some big news, I'll be talking about that first. I first heard it during the Yankees Nationals game on ESPN on Thursday, and the new format will be 16 teams in the playoffs, eight from the AL and NL. The one through three seeds will be the division winners. The four through six seed will be the second place finishers in each division. The last two seeds, the seven and eight seed, will be the remaining two teams with the best record. With this new expanded playoff format will be wild card series instead of one game. The one seed will play the eight seed in a three game series. This is the same for the second seed versus the seventh seed, the third seed versus the sixth seed, and the fourth versus fifth seed. The winner of these series will advance to the divisional series, which is the same as past years and the winner of those advance the championship series and then winner of those will represent their respective leagues in the World Series. Now that I've talked about the new playoff format, let's start talking about some baseball. So on Thursday, the actual opening day for the MLB, the first two games were the Yankees versus Nationals and then the Dodgers and Giants game. The Yankees won a four to one in I think it was five innings due to the game being rained out. Garrett Cole looked very good in his performance. He only allowed one earned run. Stanton uh, with an absolute nuke in the first inning to set the tone. Dodgers cruised past the Giants 8-1. to one, And I mean, the Giants held on for I think it was about six innings. But in the bottom of the seventh, the Dodgers unloaded and put up a five spot. And just ran away with it with the help of Kike Hernandez going four for five and having five RBIs that night. On Friday, very action-packed day, we'll start off by talking about Matt Olson's walk-off grand slam and extras to help defeat the Angels seven to three. Also, this was the first time we were able to see the new rule where uh, a runner would start on second in extras. Uh, so that was pretty neat to see. And then it ended with the walk-off grand slam so Shane Bieber was very dominant for the Indians uh, he had 14 K's through six innings and that helped the Indians win two to zero for the Cubs Kyle Hendricks with the complete game shutout slamming the door on the Brewers and that helped the Cubs win three to zero the Mets and Braves were in a rubber match obviously Jacob deGrom was throwing for the Mets and then Mike Soraka for the Braves uh, both went toe-to-toe -to -toe against each other both uh, through very very well did not give up any runs as soon as the Braves brought in their reliever Ioannis Espedes hit a solo jack and that was the only run scored during the whole game and that put the Mets over the top with the Braves uh, one to zero. This next one was a big shocker to me the Blue Jays upset the Rays in my opinion they uh, hit pretty good off Charlie Morton. Kevin Biggio with the three run jack that really put the Jays over the Rays and the Blue Jays won 6-4 that game. The last game I want to talk about for the games on Friday was the Twins White Sox where Max Kepler had two home runs that game and that helps the Twins win 10-5. Now we'll move on to the games on Saturday. We'll start by talking about Lurie Garcia hitting two home runs for the White Sox and one big over the Twins that day winning 10 to 3. Next we got the Phillies looking very strong against the Marlins on this day. They beat them 7 to 1 with the help of Phil Goslin who had two home runs that day along with a strong outing by Zach Wheeler who was acquired this offseason in free agency. Now the last game I'll talk about for the ones on Saturday is actually a really cool story. A reliever for the Rockies named Daniel Bard made his first major league appearance in seven years and picked up a W as well in his first outing as a reliever and the Rockies won three to two 
this game. Now we'll move on to Sunday's games. For these games, I won't have, I don't think I'll have any highlights of what went on, but I'll just talk through them real quick. CJ Crone of the Tigers hit a two run shot off of Michael Lorenzen to help beat the Reds uh, three to two. Next, we got Nelson Cruz, who had an absolute mammoth day with two home runs and also going four for five on that day. Today, the Twins absolutely demolished the White Sox, beating them 14 to two. Up next, we got Trevor Story, who also hit two home runs in the game and helped the Rockies win over the Rangers uh, five to two. Moving on, we got the Rays beating the Blue Jays uh, again with the help of Kevin Kiermeyer, who hit a triple in the 10th to beat the Blue Jays six to five. In this game, G-Man Choi, who normally is a lefty, hit a righty a couple at bats this game. His first at bat, he struck out, but his next time up at the plate, he hit a home run. <laughs> opposite handed a buddy of mine earlier told me about this today and he didn't know who actually hit it honestly i couldn't believe that this happened hitting for the first time in the mlb from the opposite side of the plate and hitting a jack that's pretty impressive stuff i'm not gonna lie now for some more sad news shohei otani my boy he did not record a single out in his return in his pitching return and gave up five runs in the first inning and walked three batters and it was just a complete mess. And the A's ended up beating the Angels six to four in this game. I'm pretty butthurt because I had him in starting in my fantasy baseball league and he got me negative 21 points today. And that was just an absolute vibe killer for me. So to end on some good news, uh, the Mariners beat the Astros to pick up their first dub of the season with the help of Kyle Lewis getting a go-ahead knock in the eighth. Something interesting to note is that there are no more undefeated teams, and this is the first time in 66 years that no team has gone 3-0, which is really crazy because um, 66 years ago, I don't know, that's too much math to do for me right now, but 66 years ago, whatever year that was, there are only, I think, 16 teams in the time, and that was the last time a team did not go 3-0 to start the season. That's all I got to say about opening day weekend and the new playoff format. Let me know down in the comments how you feel about the new uh, expanded playoffs. Is 16 teams in the playoffs too many, or is it just right? Let me know. Uh, please like and subscribe for more content, and I hope you have a great day, and I'll catch you in the next video.